Hi, welcome to another Journeys with Jeff program. We're very, uh, going to get right into it tonight. Uh, going to have a, a couple of very interesting guests, uh, Deborah and Diane. And we're going to start right off with, uh, with meeting them and finding out a little bit about them and uh, why they're here. Uh, Deborah, Diane. Uh, Deborah, your last name? Cohen. And Diane? Haas, and I'll spell it H-A-S-Z. Okay, uh, Deborah Cohen, Diane Haas. Now, and where, Deborah, where are you from? I live in Weathersfield. Is that where you were born? No, nope. you... was born in New Jersey, grew up in Florida, and moved back here as soon as I could. Oh, that's, that's, <laughs> yeah. And what about you, Diane? Um, I grew up in Concord, New Hampshire, and moved to Connecticut about 45 years ago. I see. Okay, so you're right both in Cromwell. Connecticut, uh, almost Connecticut. I've been here natives. since '72. I think that qualifies. Right, yeah. right. Well, what, what have you, what have you uh, done? Uh, what, did you, did you go to school around here? Did you ladies, did you go to? I went to UConn for my last two years of my bachelor's degree, and then to Eastern for my master's. And what? Um, sociology, and then early childhood education. Oh, okay. Is that that was, was that part of your? Your career spent in uh, I spent kids? about 35 years in early childhood ed. Um, all, all of those years were in daycare, first as a teacher and then as an administrator. And I've been retired for about three and a half years. And where were these kids? Where, 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 what what uh, town? Um, th this was all in the Hartford area. And for 25 of those 35 years, I was at the child care center at Hartford Hospital and CCMC. Wow. And we cared for children of employees. So those employees could go to work and care for people who very, needed them. Very good. That must have been very interesting. It was. Diane, how about yourself? <clears throat> Where did you go to college? Um, well, I went to Middlesex Community College. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, that, that was it. Um, I came down from New Hampshire because New Hampshire was kind of confining. And I thought Connecticut would be like the big place to move to. <laughs> and I, I found it very interesting. And they had tall buildings. I mean, I was a real country bumpkin when I first well, moved Concord, to Connecticut. New Hampshire. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that's the capital, it, but, it's, but it's a small... Well, it certainly is. It's, it's kind of like the size of Middletown. Very interesting. All right. Wow. So, okay. Well, ladies, what, uh, you, what, what brings you here today? What is it that... Uh, what is it that... It's your journey, and it's your path, and I'd like you to share with us uh, what, uh, what, what brings you here and at this point, at this point in your in your lives and your journey, what is it that you are mostly concerned with and, and active in these days? Um, my personal feeling is that it's difficult to pinpoint one thing that has most of my attention because I'm beginning to understand that all of the concerns we have politically and environmentally are connected. I see them as circular. Um, my most recent experience in terms of being away was at Standing Rock, at, uh, North Dakota, and I went there with Diane. Oh, you, you guys, you were at Standing Rock, Diane? Mm hmm Yes, we were. Wh when did you, when? How recently? Uh, it was the beginning of November. Uh, Deborah posted something on Facebook and said, anybody would, like, would anybody like to go to um, Standing Rock? She was thinking about going to Standing Rock, and I answered, hmm. And two weeks later, we were on our way. Why? What, 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 what concerns you? Why are a couple of ladies here, <laughs> here uh, in, in the, insulated in the, the, the green uh, southern New England state of Connecticut? Why are you, uh, what, what drew you to, to out there to, to, to participate in that I event? Like, I like clean drinking water. I believe that indigenous communities need to be respected. I, need their, I believe that their properties need to be uh, respected. And there was also a growing concern about how law enforcement was behaving toward the people who were at Standing Rock that really got my attention, that oh. really wanted me to go out there and support peaceful people. How long were you out there for? A week. Yeah. And where did you stay oh, for we that week? We stayed at the casino. This woman does not get off the ground comfortably in, in, a, in a, from a sleeping bag. So we stayed at the casino. And um, it's Prairie Nights Casino. And what was good about that is that we were able to host 
a number of people to come and shower. So, the camp, so that we would have campers that would come and spend an hour or two where it was safe, uh, warm, hospitable, and that people could shower. Right. These, there, were, these were people, excuse me, who were staying at camp who had no, no access to, you know, the, the usual amenities that we're so comfortable with. And we were able to say, come to the room where we are staying, as many other people did as well. Yes. And you can use the shower in our room. You can, you can just come and be warm and safe and comfortable and take a rest from being out in the open. Well, during the week that you ladies were there, how, how many people would you say that were joined, joined together in this particular, uh, for this particular uh, uh, demonstration? The estimate that we heard when we were out there was around 5,000. Yeah. So you were there every day for, every day from what, morning till sundown? Well, it changed. The hours weren't set hours that we were there. Um, but we would go as early in the day as possible to help out however we could. And then we usually got back to the hotel after dark. And there were about 5,000 people. Yeah. And what were you saying? Are there, were there some, the law enforcement people who were present, was it local? Was it uh, North Dakota State Police? Or just so that you people know, we're talking about the, the uh, Standing Rock, which is in North Dakota. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, it, the purpose has got to do with, we should fill in the people here, uh, it has to do with the, the pipeline. Um, the Dakota Access the Pipeline. Dakota Access Pipeline. And we'll get, we'll get back to that in a second. I want to ask <coughs> you some more questions about, about that. But you, uh, what were, who were the law enforcement people present? When we were there, I was most aware of um, Morton County Sheriff's Department. As time went on, they were joined by um, National Guard, police, uh, law enforcement, um, police from at least five other states, um, people hired by Dakota Access Pipeline. It was an overload of law enforcement, in my personal opinion, that if there has ever been one. Well, and, the, and the camp was under surveillance at all times. Right. The, here's the camp, here's a river, and here's um, Turtle Island, which is their sacred space. And on the sacred lands, they had the, the Humvees, and they had lights glaring down on, onto the um, camp. There was surveillance, always helicopters, mm -hmm. unmarked, um, unmarked or mismarked airplanes. 24 hours a day. Are you saying they, their, their they, sacred place? Who's the, they? It's the indigenous fam the families from the Standing Rock Sioux tribe. Sioux and tribe. we're talking about the Lakota. Yes. Uh, the Sioux and the Sioux mm -hmm. uh, Lakota Native La Americans. The Lakota, N Nakota, Dakota families. Well, the week that you were there, did you see? Uh, were were there was there um, peace and on both sides? Was there, were there any, any disturbances or? Um... When we were there, I don't recall any. There were no actions. Right. Because when, <clears throat> here's, here's the camp. Here's um, Route 1806. And then there's the barricade. Then, oh, and it, it's, it barricaded the people from the river. And so you, you didn't see what was going on. You actually had to go to the actions. Um, and they have training, so you have training for nonviolent action. I, we didn't go. There was enough, enough for us to do at the camp, but it was, um, it was a peaceful demonstration. And, and maybe we should address the things that really um, I feel is important. And it's the difference between a protector and a protester. <clears throat> because the law enforcement would say those protesters and, and the people at the camp oftentimes in prayer are protecting and they're protecting the water, they're in protecting their heritage. And so just the use of the word, you can almost tell like whose side who is on. And, and news always 
would get it wrong. Mm -hmm. So semantics, the, Absolutely. The, the use of semantics. I had, a, I remember uh, just, just uh, in, in relation to that, it's interesting how somebody pointed out to me, <coughs> excuse me, some time ago uh, that when the kids in the Russia uh, get up every morning at school and they pledge allegiance to their flag, we, we, we call that state indoctrination. But when American kids <laughs> do it, we call it patriotism. Yeah. So right it depends on, on who's, who, who's on, on what side you're on and what, uh, and your terminology. In some, some cases, there's the, 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 uh, the freedom fighters and, uh, you know, in other, in other, uh, really, in other uh, cases, they're, they're the same group of people are called uh, gorillas. gorillas. Mm -hmm. So it depends on, uh, but let's go back. So what, what is, what is the, in terms of the, what's the main issue? What is the argument for these protectors? Thank you. Not, <laughs> I like that. I like that. They are, well, they are. You put your, you know, put and, yourself and, in their and shoes. So, and, and we are. Right. <clears throat> well, that's part of the whole, whole rationale for Jeff's journeys mm -hmm. is for the people to, to have an opportunity to put themselves in your shoes. The people who view this show, I would hope who's ever watching, would, would, would be willing to suspend their own position and see the other side uh, with some degree of empathy and compassion and understanding. So the protectors, uh, what, what is it that they're, uh, what is it that they're protecting? Um, the Dakota Access Pipeline has been completed along an, an extremely long stretch, um, going through several states, with the exception of one small portion that still needs to go underneath the Missouri River that skirts the outline of reservation land. Um, originally, this part of the pipeline was supposed to go through um, Bismarck. Um, and to be very blunt about it, Bismarck is a mostly white, non-native um, town. The people of Bismarck said that they did not want the pipeline to go near their property. Because it might ruin their water. Because it might ruin their water supply. So it was rerouted, you know, down to this area underneath the river by Indi in, in Indian country. The, the problem is we know that pipelines fail. We know that pipelines will leak. If a pipeline underneath a waterway that serves 18 million people downstream with clean, clear water, so many people are, are in danger of losing that resource. So this whole, this whole action about everybody um, you know, coming together at Standing Rock and, and, and taking a stand, if you would, is to protect not just the water that's running along um, reservation land, but the water for 18 million people downstream. What other option do these oil companies <clears throat> that are, what is it, sand, sand shale from, from North Dakota? Yeah, from that's the back, sand and tar? Fields, back, right. back and fields. Oh, and they want to ship it down well, to where? To, was it, I think uh, it's Illinois. Illinois. Illinois to, to be refined? To, to re be shipped to China. It's not, it, it's not a commodity that's going to be used in the United States. Well, it's going to be shipped to China crude, and China's going to refine it? I haven't seen any refineries being built in I don't know that, to be honest with no. you. Okay. So it would go... <coughs> to look for that. It, it would go from, from North, Dakota North Dakota to Illinois, and yeah. then be sent to China. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the oil companies would then... Uh, of course, sell it, sell it to China. That so that is not that that oil going through the pipeline has not going to not be used domestically for the no, United not, States at all. Not at all. Not only that, but the the quality of the metal that's used in the pipes is the the most fragile that they could get away with. So it's the cheapest pipe. They already had a method. Now, using rail, they had railway, and using rails is not always the best way. But you stop and think about it. If you have a, a, a spill 
from a tanker, you see it immediately. You've got thousands of miles that this pipeline could possibly break. And the only way you can tell that there's a break is if the um, press oil pressure is lessens. <clears throat> but there's still a tremendous amount of oil that has to leak before that oil right. pressure. My understanding is that there are monitors within the pipeline that alert the company to a disaster. But it takes a lot, as Diane just said, for those monitors to go off. And by that time, the oil is up on top. Yeah. So they, they, they overcome these, uh, these resistances, these arguments against it <clears throat> with, uh, with certain uh, oh, they use, they guarantees. Use words, that, no, they uh, use words like jobs. <clears throat> <laughs> oh, well, it's going to create, going jobs. To create right. jobs, but it doesn't. It not only only will create between 20 and 40 jobs. There were 200 employees of the rail company that were displaced. So we're working with a negative number of employees. <laughs> it's not logical. What's the, what would you say, what's the most, having gone there and done what you have done, <coughs> Um, the activity that you per, you know participated in, what what have you what have you ladies taken away? What have you learned at least up to this point? What's the biggest lesson or thing that you've learned from this experience? Do you want to take it first? Okay, <clears throat> then everything's connected. Just because you have an issue of the oil pipelines doesn't mean that it's not going to affect the indigenous families that live near the pipeline, that it's not going to affect um, race relations, that it's not going to affect people all around. And, and one thing it is, it, we have a water source in Connecticut that is being taken over. I never get, is it Bloomfield? It's mm -hmm. not, it isn't Bloomfield. And so we think we're really okay with our aquifers here when really we're not. So when it's, <clears throat> water is sacred, water is life. And that's, that is their mantra, water is life. So it's very important to know that everything is connected. It's a big cycle. Deborah, what have you learned? Um, I have learned two important things. Um, and not specifically from the one week that Diane and I were in North Dakota together, but from everything that has happened, and I keep coming back to this law enforcement idea, um, I have learned that um, the overstepping and the overreaching of law enforcement and their behaviors continues to grow um, with, with no calling out, with no responsibility. And my, I'm really afraid that Morton County Sheriff's Department and all of the forces that we're working with them will not be held accountable for true assaults right. on the people who were there as water protectors. Um, so I guess one of my main um, areas of focus right now going forward is to make sure that law enforcement in any situation is really held accountable. Um, the other thing is I, I returned to Standing Rock in December with my friend Sarah Ward and we were there on the day that the easement was denied. We were there on December 4th. And there and was... What's, what's the easement? Uh, the ever? easement was the, per, the permission for the drilling to continue. And there was a, te a temporary um, denial to that easement. And we were there with thousands of people who were, who were feeling overjoyed that supposedly the pipeline had been stopped. Um, what I have learned from that experience is that we cannot celebrate a true victory until that victory is certain. You know, that we were feeling so hopeful on December 4th. We were feeling that we had really made a difference and that perhaps there was a chance to stop the pipeline. That's proving not to be true right now. So I have learned to um, refrain from celebrating until something is really a done deal. Do you ladies think that this <clears throat> maybe is being threatened, that hope in, has been a little bit dashed in the light of we've had election since then. We have a new administration in Washington. Uh, do, you, do you think that poses a greater threat to th that this pipeline could go through? Or I think that 
that our new administration poses a greater threat to everything that we hold dear, but that's a whole other story. Um, I don't think that there's anything in our current administration that um, would say no to the pipeline. It's big money interests, and our current administration is a big money interest. And they're also using this argument about the pipeline to put in place even more restrictive um, laws. And Deborah and I were talking about this oh, yes. today, that there are now 10 states, I think. 18. We, oh, 18, that are tightening up their laws. So for instance, if you want to protest now, the, instead of saying putting it under a protesting banner, they'll call it, say, oh, it's racketeering. So now that they can take not only um, you, you physically, but they can take your home or your assets. And these things are working their ways through legislators, legislatures. And I wouldn't be surprised if that doesn't get interest, introduced um, into Congress. So there's so many. This, the pipeline is just the flag for so many other issues. In several of those states, what they're trying to do is um, redefine several forms of protest um, from a misdemeanor to a felony, which can result in immense fines and up to five years in prison. So I do see this cycling up in terms of dangers to our freedom. There are also states, from what I understand, <clears throat> they're also pushing the other direction, especially I know California, Oregon, Washington. Not Washington. That's Not Washington. On one, no, no, that's, that's one of the list. states on the list yep. that we you'd were looking at today. You'd be surprised. You'd think, you'd think Colorado. But no, Colorado is on that list of on the, on the more list restrictive. For, for what? For Get becoming more, more restrictive. Re restrictive. And what are they restricting? More and more restricting more and more. The forms of protest. Yes. Where people can protest and how they can protest. In Washington, too. Yeah, that's on Washington the list. Washington State. Oh, yes. <laughs> See, you, you think you know. And then you don't. Right, right. Well, so well, listen. How does this <clears throat> over how, the, this specific issue? What are what what are what are your what values or what uh, morals is this all rooted in for you guys? In terms of your overriding, <sighs> um, your most important belief. My most important belief. Gee, there are a million. Um, <laughs> but for purposes of right here and now, I guess, um, would be our right as free citizens to speak our mind and to protest and to show up when we think something is not going the way it should and to say it's time to stop. Is, isn't that something that our government kind of guarantees? Isn't that kind of in our Constitution? Isn't that in the, the, the First Amendment? And, and isn't that kind of what the, the whole the whole reason d'etre for the existence of but our you're assume, government. But you're assuming that people actually believe that. And, and, and I think you find more and more that people are more than willing to give up certain things because they fear terrorism. So I'm more than willing to give up some of my freedom of speech to, if somebody keeps me safe. And so if I feel that way, then, that, then you should feel that way as well. So, yeah, fear, unfortunately, when fear and reason face off with each other, fear, fear. fear is going to win the day because yeah. that's part of, mm -hmm. of who we are. But that fear can be, it can be um, cultivated or, or created um, out of, uh, you know, made, made, made word, brought out like in some ugly news. ways. <laughs> and to your question about the Constitution, and I know that we could, I don't want to take this again in another direction, but we also need an administration who respects the Constitution if we expect it to be followed and used in our best interests. So we could do another show. Well, when you say <laughs> our best interests, you talk, you mean we, the we the American, people. We, we the, the people. people. We the people, citizens. And do you think that there are times the government, this is a little bit, getting a little bit general now, but, but, uh, I think Standing Rock may be an example of sometimes the government of the people, by the people, and for the people mm -hmm. is sometimes more be in a, a behest to the to the um, 
the money. <laughs> the, 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 yeah, the, the power, the, the power structure. Yes. Uh, and, 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 to, and their interests, whether it's corporations or big businesses or the, you know, the fossil fuel industry or whatever. Yes, and I think that in terms of um, communities like Standing Rock, um, I'm not sure that we the people actually ever included those people. I think that we have communities across oh, yeah. the country, you know, who have not ever been respected, who have not been rep uh, represented, who have not been held within that group of we the people. So, and we went as guests, and we had to we had to look at other cultures and fit in, as opposed to being it being our we culture. Definitely guests. Well, the five thousand people you <clears throat> said were there that during that week, mm -hmm. just br just briefly. How did it break down demographically? I honestly were they mostly don't know. Native Americans were there. Were there? Were there uh, European, uh, white people, every, every, Hispanic yeah, people, black people? Everybody was there. It was All a different. Very, yes. I would guess that the that the majority of people were um, Native Americans, um, but there were also people there from overseas, mm -hmm. from other wow. countries, wow. Um, and certainly people from across the United States. Yeah. Well, Diane, what's your next mission? Do you have a? I actually I do. Um, I'm planning on leaving the beginning of April, and I'm going to go to as many of the camps as I possibly can to support and to see how they are, and just to be part of um, the the process. So there's there's one in New Jersey, there's one in Florida, there's one in two in Texas. So I'll, I'll be getting my list and getting in my car and you will. bringing supplies. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Deborah? All right. Um, my thought is that I will next travel to New Jersey. Um, but more importantly, right now, I think my main job here at home is to um, continue to help to get news out, um, to share factual information, and to encourage other people to get involved however they best can. Diane, if you could say one quick 10 words or less to, to people who are watching, mm -hmm. what would you say? Um, just get off their butts and research and don't believe everything that you read. Deborah. Okay. I would, <laughs> I would um, ask everybody to choose one thing that really gets their attention and do something about it. And would you ladies come back on again? Would you be come, up, come back again? Thank you for the invitation. I'd love to have you guys Certainly. come back. Glad Thank to. you. We're out of time. Thank you very much. If there's anybody out there, if you would like to Get in touch with us, as I've always said, and you want to contribute your perspective, you, if you want to weigh in, if you have another viewpoint, if you have the same viewpoint, and you'd like to come in and be on the show, you're more than welcome. We, this show is open to all people with all ideas, and thank you very much.